Superman is the original modern superhero, the one who, for the most part, kicked off the entire superhero genre. And like anything popular, he has inspired a legion of similar characters. Characters like Fawcett Comics' Captain Marvel, Marvel Comics' Gladiator, and Image Comics' Omni-Man. Now that's not to say that these characters are rip-offs, they're all excellent creations that are entirely distinct in their own right. But the subject of today's video is a character who was intended to be a perfect copy of Superman, but things didn't quite go to plan. Let's talk about Superman's perfectly imperfect clone and member of his rogues gallery, Bizarro. This video is brought to you by We Print Miniatures, an independent retailer with over 3,000 different miniature models to choose from. To get 10% off your first order or a recurring mystery box subscription, head over to weprintminiatures.com slash serumlake and make sure the discount code serumlake, all one word, is applied at the checkout. Now on with the video. As is tradition, before talking about the animated version of this character, let's start by examining the source material, the original comic books. Bizarro made his first appearance in 1958's Superboy No. 68. In this story, the boy who would one day become Superman visited a scientist with a wonderful new invention, a duplicator ray. The scientist's intention was to duplicate medicine, however the results from the ray were completely useless. After stumbling in the lab, the scientist accidentally directed the ray at Superboy, making an imperfect copy of the Boy of Steel. This copy of Superboy was a pale-skinned, angular, warped copy of Superboy. His head was more square with a receded hairline and generally blank expression on his face. The citizens of Smallville of course reacted in horror at the sight of him, except for a blind girl named Melissa. When he spoke he used broken English. You could understand what he was saying but it wasn't grammatically correct, boy do I relate. But Melissa could tell from his voice that he was a kind soul. Immediately looking at this character, I can see that he was heavily inspired by Universal Studios' Frankenstein's monster, as portrayed by Boris Karloff. There has been a long tradition of comic book characters being inspired by movie characters. The Joker was inspired by Conrad Veidt's Gwynplaine from The Man Who Laughs, for instance, and Bizarro continues in this tradition. Much like the movie monster, Bizarro isn't evil. He just doesn't understand what's going on and inadvertently endangers the people of Smallville. He's a very sympathetic character, and much like Frankenstein's monster, he didn't ask to be created. No matter what he does, he just makes things worse. He has a good heart, which he inherited from Superboy, and has a strong desire to help people though. As an imperfect copy of Superboy, Bizarro had none of the same weaknesses. However, he could be felled by the irradiated remains of the duplicator machine, and after flying headfirst into Superboy, Bizarro exploded, showering the surrounding area with Bizarro dust particles. This Bizarro dust led to Melissa regaining her sight, perhaps a final act of heroism from Bizarro. And that was the end of Bizarro, until he randomly appeared in the daily Superman newspaper comic strips, and proved to be quite popular. Superman's mainline comic books were in a separate continuity to the weekly newspaper strips, which were also in a separate continuity to the Sunday newspaper strips, which is frankly giving me a massive headache just thinking about. Anyway, the reason I bring this up is that the eight-week Bizarro storyline from the newspapers was so popular that the editors at DC Comics decided that it was time to reintroduce him properly in Action Comics 254, published in 1959. This time, the villainous evil genius Lex Luthor had replicated the duplicator ray experiment to create the ultimate enemy for Superman. The last Bizarro was a duplicate of Super Boy. Just think how dangerous he would be as a man. Inexplicably, this Bizarro had the memories of the last Bizarro and refused to be Lex Luthor's pawn, taking him to jail. However, the citizens of Metropolis had the same horrified reaction to him as the people of Smallville, and their rejection and attempts to kill him caused Bizarro to despair. He attempted to end his own life by flying full speed into a cliff, but smashed straight through it as if it were butter. The only thing to lift his spirits would be his affection for Lois Lane. He knew that she could never love him because of his hideous face, so he used the duplication machine to make a bizarro copy of her. Now this was a fun continuation of imitating the Universal Frankenstein movies with The Bride of Bizarro. Bizarro is in many ways the perfect Superman villain for the light-hearted, science fiction heavy Silver Age of comic books. This was a period that came after the comic books were blamed for juvenile delinquency and as such publishers put out more family friendly adventures. He may very well have been inspired by Frankenstein's monster, a patchwork of corpses of criminals, but he was far less gruesome. The results of a fantastical scientific experiment with some light-hearted humorous misunderstandings, light peril and a lesson for readers about not judging people based on their appearances. With Bizarro re-established and christened the simple Simpleton of Steel, which actually is a bit mean, he was given his own backup story in Adventure Comics detailing his comedic adventures with his Bizarro family on Bizarro World, a planet populated with Bizarro copies of people, including a Bizarro Mr. Mixius Pitlick. 
All of this changed following Crisis on Infinite Earths in 1985, when much of DC's continuity was reset. Superman's continuity, which by this point was bloated and overly complicated, was completely rebooted by writer-artist John Byrne in his seminal Man of Steel miniseries. Issue 5 of Man of Steel reintroduces Bizarro as a defective clone of Superman created by businessman Lex Luthor. Byrne's version of Bizarro is more bestial, much like the Mary Shelley original Frankenstein's monster. He barely speaks, instead communicates communicating through guttural grunts and the flinging of his fists. He did display some intelligence, he knew that he had a secret identity, and went out of his way to save Lois Lane's sister Lucy after she had jumped off of a building because she had been rendered blind, but much like the original Bizarro, he wouldn't stick around. Bizarro would be killed at the end of the story by clashing with Superman with a tremendous force turning him into powder. In another callback to the original story, this Bizarro powder would restore Lucy Lane's vision. Bizarro wouldn't appear again until the mid-90s following the death and return of Superman's storyline. It was in this era that the comic book writers tried to reimagine Superman's classic rogues for a modern era, including making Toyman a child-murdering serial killer. This new Bizarro was reintroduced as a kind of hybrid between the original Bizarro and the post-Crisis Bizarro. He's a very talkative, comedic, defective clone of Superman created by Lex Luthor. At the time, Lex Luthor had cloned himself a new body after he had developed kryptonite poisoning, but his clone body was degrading. By experimenting on Bizarro, he hoped to find a solution to his cloning woes. Bizarro would remember things from Superman's life, particularly his affection for Lois Lane, which would bring the two into conflict. However, when Luther's forces captured Bizarro and began to experiment on him, Superman and Lois Lane would do everything they could to save him. Sadly, they were too late, and he passed away in Lois's arms. I have to assume that Bizarro was killed off so frequently because DC didn't want a being with similar powers to Superman running around. There was a mandate at the time that Superman be the only Kryptonian in the DC universe, which is why Superboy was a half-human clone, and Supergirl was a protoplasmic synthoid. And I suppose with Bizarro being a clone you could always bring him back later on if you wanted to. Which they did. Now this brings us to the DCAU version of Bizarro. I often highlight how the writers on these shows would take inspiration from the comic books rather than slavishly adapting storylines. They were not bound by the comics, they simply took inspiration from them. Bizarro is a great example of this. In the episode Identity Crisis, we're introduced to their version of Bizarro. Bizarro is a clone of Superman implanted with false memories to make him think that he is Superman. For a time, the effect is quite convincing, although there's something off about the way he speaks to people. He's delivering lectures almost as if he's reciting from a script in a robotic way rather than having an actual conversation. Over time we'd start to see white patches of skin form on his body and the costume also degraded and that must mean that the outfit is part of his body, effectively making his cape a massive flap of skin, which ugh, really grosses me out. Despite not having any of Superman's real memories, Bizarro still has a desire to be heroic, although he comically misunderstands most of the situations he's involved in. For instance, he mistakes an organised demolition of a building for an attack throwing the wrecking ball across the city and almost ruining someone's wedding day. This is a neat take on the confusing concept of Bizarro speak, where he says the opposite of what he means. Think, me am so sad to see you when he means he's happy to see someone. No, instead it's Bizarro's understanding of situations that he gets backwards. Bizarro clearly spends most of this episode thinking that he is Superman, but when he retraces his steps, thanks to some coaching from Lois Lane, he learns the horrible truth. He is a clone of Superman, one of many that Lex Luthor has created. Luthor planned to create an army of Supermen that he could probably sell to the highest bidder, and also control. While there's nothing gratuitous about the clone scene, seeing a rack of tanks filled with these yellow, expressionless copies of Superman is really unnerving. Bizarro clearly reacts in horror at this revelation and goes about destroying the facility. He may not be particularly smart, but he knows that having these copies of Superman is a bad idea. But through his rage and disappointment, Bizarro still possesses a kind heart. When Lois is trapped by falling rubble and Superman stops fighting him to save her, Bizarro realises the truth. Superman is the real Superman because he saved Lois Lane. That's what Superman does. Superman and Lois are able to flee the exploding lab, but Bizarro is caught in the explosion. However, nobody was found. Could it be that he survived? Yes, yes he did. Bizarro would return in the episode Bizarro's World, which picks up shortly after the events of Identity Crisis. Bizarro survived the explosion at the lab and learns about Superman's Fortress of Solitude. The machinery at the fortress mistakes Bizarro for Superman, granting him full access to Brainiac's files on Krypton. After using the Kryptonian technology, images of Krypton are broadcast into his mind, and Bizarro believes that he needs to replicate Krypton on Earth, including the destruction of the planet. 
Bizarro is easily confused and doesn't really understand what it means to kill. He just can't get his head around the idea that blowing up a planet full of innocent people is not something Superman would do. After all, it happened in the past already. And it's clear to Superman that he can't allow Bizarro to go free. It's not until Superman explains that destroying the city would also kill Lois that Bizarro begins to understand why his plan is problematic. Unlike the comic book version, Bizarro doesn't get killed off. Instead, he's sent to an uninhabited planet in a kind of twisted reflection of baby Kal-El's journey to the populated planet Earth, where he can run free with his new pet Crypto, the murderous space lizard, which he had released from Superman Zoo within the Fortress of Solitude. And I have to say that Crypto is a wonderful joke character. He's entirely the opposite of the cuddly, friendly namesake dog. He's a scaly, slavering beast that keeps trying to attack Bizarro, who interprets these assaults as a sign of affection. Bizarro would spend some time on his new planet, building a replica metropolis, complete with citizens made of stone and bark for him to protect. His peace would be short-lived as he became the unwitting pawn of Mr. Mixius Pidalek in the episode Little Big Head Man. When he was last defeated, Mixius Pidalek swore to leave Superman alone, but he never said that he wouldn't send other people to do his dirty work. Outside of the opening, this episode is mostly a Mixius Pidalek episode, with Bizarro acting as a tool of destruction, rampaging around Metropolis because he was fooled into thinking that everyone had been laughing at him. Bizarro is easily manipulated as seen by both Lex Luthor and Mixius Pidalek. All he wants to do is to protect people and be a good person, but due to a fundamental flaw with his personality and through no fault of his own, he is doomed to failure. But his heart is always in the right place. After returning to his planet with Crypto and Mixus Pidalek, Bizarro wouldn't be seen again until the Justice League Unlimited episode Ultimatum as part of the Legion of Doom. Bizarro teams up with Giganta to try to free Gorilla Grodd from prison. After all, he'd do anything for the woman he loves, even break her boyfriend out of jail but he is quickly dealt with by Wonder Woman and Long Shadow of the Ultiman. It isn't clear if this is the same Bizarro or a new clone made by Gorilla Grodd. The only thing that makes me doubt that it's the same Bizarro is the fact that in later episodes, he speaks in Bizarro speak, with Bizarro telling Lex Luthor that Superman is his best friend, so he's gonna go kill him. Bizarro doesn't have a prominent role within the Legion of Doom. He is mostly muscle, taking out a large number of powerful foes. It is curious to see him showing loyalty towards Lex Luthor, joining Luthor's side when he mutinies against Grodd, and I find that surprising considering the events of Identity Christ You'd think that by now, Bizarro would know that Lex Luthor was up to no good, but I can't rule out the possibility that Luthor had manipulated Bizarro again. Out of all of Superman's villains, Bizarro is probably the least villainous. He feels compelled to help people. It's just that his version of helping is a hindrance more often than not. But at the end of the day, he has a good heart, the same heart as the Man of Steel. Okay, that's the end of this week's video essay. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. You know how YouTube works. If you enjoyed this look at Superman villains, do let me know in the comments and I'll start adding them into the rotation. If you really enjoyed the video and have the means, you can throw a buck or two my way via the thanks button. Likewise, I offer channel memberships for $1.99 per month. This will get you early access to my weekly video essay, sporadic members only videos, priority responses to your comments, an icon on your profile indicating that you're one of my members, and custom emojis. When I return next week, we're going to take a look at one of the most popular villains from the Batman Beyond era, and one that a number of people have confessed a weird attraction to. We're going to talk about the oily assassin, Ink. Hope to see you then.